We'll recite the verse of the month together. <laughs> Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. First John chapter 4, verse 7. Thank you indeed. Sorry, folks, for the commotion. What a wonderful problem we are setting up church in our dark that time. We're going to be at least 25 people so far out there, so, so that is awesome. We'll figure that out. Christ is risen indeed.
thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let all who fear the Lord say, His love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Eternal God, we confess that we have tried to hide from you for what we have done wrong. We have lived for ourselves. We have refused to bear the troubles of others and have turned from our interests. We have ignored the pain of the world and passed by the hungry, the poor, and the oppressed. O oh God, in your mercy, forgive our sin and free us from selfishness that we may choose your will and obey your commandments. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. As a called and ordained servant of the Word, I announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
not here, for he is risen. All glory to God, right? Can I have the reader come forward, please? Come on up, Joe. Stone away from the entrance of the tomb. 
But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Uh, 
actually there is something in there. There are some stickers in there. It says Merry Christmas. No, it doesn't say Christmas. It says Christ is risen. Uh, happy Easter, right? Yeah. Um, we're going to have an Easter egg hunt outside. You know about that, right? And that's why we're here, because you reminded mom or dad, or mom and dad, and told them, hey, we've got to go to church today, there's an Easter egg hunt. And, and there's all kinds of good things in the Easter egg hunt. What are they? They love the Guess what else is in there? Oh, candy.
They already went out there looking for the eggs. No stopping. Sorry, I guess I got them a little too wound up. Oh, it's great. All glory to God, huh? This is the way East is meant to be. And a beautiful sunny Sunday. I have to thank you all for your prayers. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. to the heart of the matter, part of the matter, and that is our glorious Easter message, gospel, text, based on the gospel according to Mark, chapter 16, verse 6, actually let's take 5 through 8, we'll put the whole passage together. Um, if I back up a little bit, is that going to create a problem? Right back up a little, Tony. Am I going? I drew the circle. I'm right. going off camera, off screen. I'm still in the circle. Why? Still can hear me. Might be able to hear me better if I do this. Oh, you were fine. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's, been, it's been good every week. Uh, the the eagle has not passed out. So, uh, we're, we're safe. We're safe. Uh, Mark 16. Verses 5 through 8, as the women entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white, a white robe, sitting on the right side. They were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He, is not, he has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, wow, doesn't get any better than this. This is great. You realize that it's been a long time since we've had this opportunity. We've done a lot of virtual uh, broadcasting of, of our services, and even last year, we were not able to be together like this. It's been two years since God's people have had the opportunity on Easter Sunday to be together and to worship and praise the Lord. Wow. got the glorious message before us this morning and we want to hear a little bit more about that uh, we've been uh, focusing on the body of Christ as uh, our Lenten theme all during the weeks of Lent focusing on different parts of the body of Christ and it culminated in uh, the crucified body of Christ on Good Friday Interestingly enough, I'm just going to share something with you. Our message is short and to the point, and Ed, our deacon, is going to assist as we conclude that lesson, that theme on the body of Christ this year. But I just want to share something with you. Um, I, I meant to bring it along there again. Um, pastors, I, I'm... I shouldn't say this. Karen keeps telling me, my wife keeps telling me, stop telling people you're retired. <laughs> <laughs> because you're really not. <laughs> uh, my brother-in-law reminded me years ago that there is no place in Scripture where it talks about pastors retire. <laughs> you know? pastors, pastors don't retire, they just go out to pastor. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. I'll edit that out. Uh, yeah, you can edit that. That's nice. But these are being taped. You can edit anything. Uh, but, uh, no, the, I, I forget some things at times. And I forgot, I had a, I, I received a letter in the mail. I don't know how many of you received it. It was from some church up in, um, I don't know, Mount Sinai or Miller Place on the North Shore. And they were, they were celebrating the crucifixion. They were celebrating Good Friday. 
They were celebrating the death of Jesus on the cross. And the invitation was to come and celebrate the death of Jesus. And I thought, okay, <laughs> but that's not the end. There was no mention about, <laughs> about the resurrection. There was no invitation to come and celebrate the joy of the resurrection. It was simply an invitation to celebrate his death. And I had to say, we're missing something here. <laughs> You're missing the most important point. Yes, he suffered and he died for the sin of the world. And we said, when he said, it is finished, he meant, it is finished. There's nothing more we need to, try to do, can do. We can't add to it. He did it all. He paid the sacrifice for your sin, for my sin, for the sins of the world, sins that ever have been and ever will be committed. He paid the price so that we could be here today rejoicing and praising his name and knowing the joy of forgiveness and the life that is ours through faith in him. That's the joy of the resurrection. Yes. So today we're going to conclude the series that we started on the body of Christ with the theme of the risen body of Christ. I'm going to invite Ed to come up now and we'll do our dialogue series as we've done before. To contemplate the solemnities of our Savior's suffering, our worship recently has focused on the theme of the body of Christ. <clears throat> Feet, hands, mouth, ears, eyes, heart, blood, the body of Christ, a source of blessing for all with whom he came into contact with his feet to another, so that his hands could touch and heal. His mouth continually announced the forgiveness of sins and proclaimed the love of a gracious parental God. His ears were tuned to hear cries for mercy from others, and his eyes were open to see their misery. His heart, full of compassion and love, again and again prompted him to use the power of God to heal and comfort them with the forgiveness of their sins, even to the point of raising the dead. Christ used the full capacity of his body to bring God's love, God's kingdom, into this world. As a kind of summary of his love for us, at the Last Supper, Jesus gave his body for food and his blood for drink. Then he gave his body to be broken and crucified and his blood to flow from the cross. So the body of Christ was buried, laid in a stone grave, sealed in a tomb with a great rock. It was this, this same lifeless body of Christ which Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were seeking when they went to visit the sepulchre early that Sunday morning. But they didn't find the lifeless body of Christ in the tomb. They had their spices ready to anoint the body of their Lord, their Master. Where was it? The answer for them came from the message of an angel. Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. The body of Christ has risen. The body of Christ is resurrected to eternal life. It isn't just a nebulous ghost sort of body either. For Jesus himself met them and greeted his disciples. He offered his hands in blessing. And Thomas recognized the print of the nails there. They fell at his feet in wonder, those same feet of Christ, once washed by the tears of a sinful woman, were again embraced. They heard the gracious words of his mouth 
and he ate in their presence. It is true that his body may have changed in some way. Glorified, we might call it, more real perhaps, more solid than our world, maybe, for he walked through the walls which the disciples used to hide behind in fear. He stepped through those solid walls as we might step through a curtain of fog. The risen body of Christ is more permanent than the cloud of atoms and electrons which we call reality. His body was changed to a glorious, immortal body. And because he lives, we shall live also. In Christ, we too shall have better eternal bodies. This is the good news for the day of our own death that we will live eternally in God's kingdom because of the gracious, free gift of faith given to each of us. But there is also good news for today, here and now. I think we can get this good news by asking the question, where is the body of Christ now? Where is the body of Christ today? We know it is no longer walking the dusty roads of Palestine and preaching and healing, for he was crucified and buried. We know the body of Christ is no longer in the tomb either, for the angels announced to the women that he was risen, and he appeared both to them and to many disciples. One answer then to the question, where is the body of Christ now, is that it is in the kingdom of God in heaven. But there is another question to the same question, and both answers are true. Where is the body of Christ today? The body of Christ is right here. The body of Christ is within the walls of this building. The body of Christ is in fact gathered and seated in these very pews. You are the body of Christ, the feet of Christ. You walked into hospital rooms to bring the presence of God to people in need. You walk into homes of the elderly and shut in to bring the presence of Jesus Christ to their loneliness. You are the body of Christ, the hands of Christ. You lay your hands upon the sick. You touch them with love and pray for them. You are the body of Christ. The mouth of Christ, you speak love, gentleness, and God's mercy to the brokenhearted and grieving. You announce forgiveness and reconciliation to those who feel the guilt of their sins. You are the body of Christ, the ears of Christ. You hear the cries of the sad and weary. You listen patiently, for many need to express their pain and exhaustion. You hear them with the love of Jesus. You are the body of Christ, the eyes of Christ. You see the weak and the powerless as they suffer injustice, and you become their ally as Christ has become our advocate before the Father. You are the body of Christ, the heart of Christ. You have the very love of God to move you. You contribute generously sums of money hours of labor, great talents and abilities to the work of Christ. It is the very heart of Christ which compels such compassion from you. True, true, you are the risen body of Christ. As members of the body of Christ, we must take care of one another. That is why we come together here only when we are all here is the body of Christ complete. If any one of you is not here, we are not whole. Then one of the members of Christ is cut off from the body. When we are all here, we draw strength from one another. We also draw strength from the Word, the good news of forgiveness, which gives life to our body in Christ. We draw strength also from the sacraments, from baptism, which gives birth to our members, and from communion, which sustains us with the body and blood of Jesus, our Lord and our head. 
We need this sustenance to keep our body united and to have the strength day after day to be the body of Christ, bringing God's love, his mercy, and his grace into all the world. That is why we gather here week after week, so we can keep on being the feet of Christ, the hands of Christ, the mouth, ears, eyes, and heart of Christ. That's the good news for today. We get to be the flesh and blood, body of God's eternal love, and the good news for eternity is that we shall live with him forever. For scripture assures us, our commonwealth is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body, by the power which enable him, enables him even to subject all things to himself. May God grant us this faith, this power, this love, this body of Christ. May we ever be moved by his eternal love and forgiveness. And as we worship the risen Lord, may we ever be the body of Christ here on earth and throughout all eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
please rise in prayer. Christ Jesus laid that strong bands for our offenses given. But now at God's right hand, he stands and brings us light from heaven. Therefore, let us joyful be and sing to God right thankfully loud songs of hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Holy Jesus, you died to take away our sins and rose to fulfill all the Father's promises in Scripture. Send now your Holy Spirit so that by your grace we may stand in this faith always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with Matthew, our synod president, Derek, our district president, and all our pastors. Keep them faithful to deliver to your people the apostolic gospel of your son's death, burial, and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, let us hold fast to the word preached to us, that receiving it with joy, we may take our stand in it and be saved by it. Hinder all who would sow doubt into our hearts, and grant us courage to confess its truth in our life and conversation. Lord, in your mercy, bless Joseph our president, and all who make and administer our laws. Frustrate the forces of evil, and do not let our leaders cooperate with them or further their goals. Guard our armed forces as they stand watch for us at home and abroad. Let them serve with honor and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Have mercy on the sick and those in any need, those in our prayer folder, and those we name in our hearts. Let the dawning light of the new creation in Christ sustain them in faith. In accord with your will, grant them renewed health, a foretaste of their eternal healing in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Give us joy in your son's great victory feast as he shares it with us from this altar. In the eating of his true body and the drinking of his precious blood and faith, overcome our sin by his forgiveness and swallow up our death in his life, that we may be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Comfort those who mourn with the truth of Christ's empty tomb, that in the midst of their grief, they may abide in the hope of his resurrection. Uphold them in faith as they await the day when you will wipe away every tear from all their faces. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We join today in singing eternal hallelujahs with innumerable angels in festal gathering, with the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and with the spirits of the righteous made perfect. And we bring these petitions before you, dear Father, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Christ, the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. 
this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Now receive the benediction of the Lord. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will and me. He work in you what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, our Lord. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.